I gotta stop eating bean burritos. Hey, what's going on everybody? A few months back, I made a video showing how you could do a face swap meme where you could take something and just track your face and put it on it. Most people liked it. A few people were like, nah, this isn't really what I wanted. I want something to grab my face and put it on something else. Probably my fault for putting that face off reference in there, my bad. So today we're gonna to do just that. We're gonna take our face and figure out how to track it and put it on something else or someone else. Now, quick disclaimer, this is not a deep fake tutorial. This is not where a computer writes your face and puts it on someone else. So don't expect amazing results. This is somewhere in between, you know, the face swap meme I did and a deep fake. Nice happy medium, maybe. But nonetheless, if you do want to put your face on something else and figure out how to track it and get the motion right, this video is for you. So with that, let's go ahead and transition to Resolve. All right, I just opened up Resolve here. I'm here on the edit page and we need to get a few clips. Now, this is very important. If you're going to do this, you're going to want footage of you doing the exact same thing that the other person is doing. So I have several clips here. And what I need to do is I need to find the motion that matches the best. So I already put a few clips on here, but all I did was scrub through my footage until I had that turnaround point, hit I for an endpoint, O for an out point. And then rather than just dragging this and dragging it down, see, I get the audio. I don't want the audio in this case. If I just want the video, I can hold alt and drag on the clip that I've highlighted. And there I go, I get without the audio. That's all I did is find a bunch of clips of me and my son doing the same thing. And then I need to find the best ones that match. And to do that, all I did was I drug these over top of each other and then I lowered the opacity of the top one. So go over to your inspector, lower the opacity a little bit, and then you can kind of scrub through it and see which ones line up and where. And then you can adjust your clips accordingly. So that's a pretty good motion right there. So then once you found your clips and you have them in the right place, go ahead and make them the same length, highlight both of them, right click and go to new fusion clip. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna trim that clip the exact length of what you had. So rather than dropping a new fusion clip and having to mess around with all the footage in there, this brings in your footage as is. And that's very important to remember as is because if I didn't change the opacity, which I don't think I did, so I'm gonna undo that, it'll bring in that opacity. So I need to bring that back up click on both of those and then make it a new fusion clip. All right, now I go to the fusion page. So once I get my footage into fusion, I need to figure out which clip is which. So I'm gonna drag that to the viewer. So I'm gonna hit F2 and I'm gonna rename these. And then what I need to do is I need to track my face, make another track and track it onto this footage below. So I'm gonna go ahead and just space this out here. I'm gonna hit control space and put in a planar tracker. So once I have a planar tracker in, I need to track this footage. So I'll go back to my first frame. I'm gonna leave it on track. I'm gonna change from point to hybrid point area. And then I'm gonna change it to just translation because all the perspective change and all the rotation is gonna happen right on our footage. So I don't wanna mess with that. And usually the ear is a good thing to track, but since at the end it's kind of off the screen, that's not what I'm gonna use. Instead, I'm just gonna try and track my whole head here. So I'm just gonna click on the screen, make a shape around my head, and then I'm going to click set over in my inspector, and I'm gonna click on this to track to the end. And you can see it did a pretty good track there. Okay, now that it's tracked, I'm gonna go back over to my inspector, I'm gonna click on track, and I'm gonna change it to steady, because I basically want everything to move around this position here. So a few things to check my track, I can right click and go to guides, show guides. And if I want, I can add in a transform, and then on this transform, I can just basically move it to the position that I want it. I want it kind of centered on my face and I can just scrub through it and see how well that track did. So it looks pretty centered. The other thing I can do to check my track is add in a mask just around my head. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to need it a little bit later anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take off this transform and I'm going to add in a background and merge it in. Just take this point, put it over here. Go ahead and merge it in and what i need is i need this background to actually be the background right now this green line says it's being the foreground and my other footage is the background i'm going to click on this merge i'm going to hit Control t to swap those i'm going to pull this up and bring it to my viewer okay so now i have the black as the background i'm going to go to this background node and i'm going to turn the alpha all the way down and then i'm going to add in an ellipse mask here's my ellipse i'm going to put that in and it's going to cut everything away because I already put that alpha down on that background, except for where I want that. So click on your ellipse, resize it, center it around my head there. And now I can see how well that did. That's pretty good. That's what we want. We're going to replace this ellipse later, but for now, that's all we need. So now that I have that tracked and steadied, I need to add in a track on Micah's face here. 
So I'm gonna go over my fudge here, click mica, I'm gonna hit control space, and going to add in a tracker. Not a planar tracker, just a normal tracker. So now I grab this tracker, and it's really hard to see, it comes in really small, and it's even harder to move. You gotta grab this little point here in the upper left hand corner, and this time I am gonna track the ear, I'm gonna track that dark spot right there. I'm gonna make sure I'm back on my first frame, and then I'm gonna go over to my inspector, tracker, it's fine. Under adaptive mode, I'm going to go to best match, because this gives a much better track than just none. And then I'm going to go ahead and track it. So now I'm going to scrub through my footage and I'm going to see how well that tracked. And it did a pretty good job. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my inspector. And instead of tracker, I'm going to click on operation. Under operation, I'm going to click on match move. Now I can plug something into this tracker and it'll follow along that path. So I'm going to disconnect that and put my merge into that tracker. I can go ahead and get rid of this merge and just bring that down. Now, if I bring the whole thing up to my viewer, now I have both things tracking. Now, obviously it's not in the right spot, but this is like 90% of the way there. The rest is just going to be tweaking and adding in mass. So I'll go back to my first frame and let's go ahead and move this first footage here. I'm going to add in a transform. I could just use the one before or I could just use a new one. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to go on that transform and then I'm just going to move that into place. So what you want to do first is get your main movements in position before we add in a mask. This will save you a ton of time and a lot of hassle. So if I go to this merge, I can turn down the blend, that way I can see both faces and then I'll go back to this transform and I can resize it and get it in position. And I found lining up the eyes works pretty well. So this is going to be too big, I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to move it into position, and that's pretty decent. That's not too bad. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a keyframe on the center, on the size, and also the rotation, because I may need to rotate that in a few spots. And now I'm just going to scrub through my footage and find different locations where my face needs to be. Say that point there, that's a pretty big move. That's off quite a bit. So I'm going to rotate it, I'm going to move it, and try and match it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can just scrub through your footage and see where you need to add in other keyframes. I probably need another one in between those two because it becomes unsynced. And then once you have that done, then you can go ahead and change your mask. So I'm gonna go back to this keyframe here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in polygon. I'll just disconnect that ellipse. I'll go ahead and turn my blend all the way back up, and then I will start drawing a mask. Now my suggestion is to use as few points as possible because you're gonna be animating this and you can always add in more points later. It's just a big hassle to move a ton of points. So use as few as possible and try and use as few keyframes as possible. If you do get a mess where you have a whole bunch of points and they're out of sync and you've you know moved this around a bit and you've made a bunch of keyframes, you can just go to your inspector when you're on the keyframe Go to your inspector and unclick this to undo the keyframe. And if you have too many points, go ahead and click on one and hit delete. And that'll delete it from all of the frames. I'm just giving you that note because I did this a ton of times and having too many keyframes and too many points just makes this a big hassle. So the best way I found is just to do a couple across the forehead. Go ahead and do one at the top and bottom of the ears, a couple around the chin, and then you know another couple up around where the ear would be. And that's a pretty good mask. You just want to get this area here. And you may need to add in a few more features, uh, but you can add that in later and move those points around as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in that mask. Now it's not going to be in the position I wanted because we have this transform after we have the tracker here. And I was drawing on the original image. That's okay. I can just click on this polygon here and I can see the center point and I will just move that to where I need it. Now obviously, because we also resize the image, it's not correct, so I'm just gonna fan this out a little bit. And then once you have that done, you can go to your inspector, you can turn on soft edge a little bit, to start blending that in. From here on in, it's just basically just moving things a little bit, adjusting, making keyframes, and that's how you'll get your effect. Uh, but we can scrub through this, and it's not gonna be too terribly bad. You can see that we're out of sync there because I had that other keyframe. But because of that track, a lot of it sticks into place pretty well. I'm going to have to do some more work here. And I am going to have to animate this mask. I'm going to have to go back to an earlier point and move those in. And then it'll expand because it automatically keyframes. 
and that's basically all that needs to happen now is just a bunch of tweaks. So this is why I say do your main keyframes first on this transform to get it in the right location and then do the minor tweaks on the mask as you need them. All right, a few additional details. This is from the final one I put in the video. I added in a second transform for some extra tweaking later on. I added in a DVE node that just lets you rotate it and change the perspective. You can tell it, it just, it doesn't look that great though. So the more you can just mimic the movement of what you want to put your face on, the better. I added in some color correction because I was way up high in the sun and my face was just washed out and didn't look great for blending. I added in some motion blur and just some more color correction to blend it all in. But by and large, that's how you're going to do it. Use the planar tracker to get your face, use the normal tracker to track it to the other footage, then go ahead and feather things out and keyframe it to make it look good.